Welcome to Studio 7. I'm the Reverend Elaine Yavazak, and today I'll be reading the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, from the 21st century King James Version. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, who was great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, when the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds, but Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. Today's message will be directed toward those who are honest, loving, and caring towards others. To those of you who know me from Revelation Faith Book, I sometimes give a warning before I preach. <laughs> and that is that some of you are not going to like what I have to say. But I'll be as gentle as possible. <laughs> Here we go. I have met many people on social media platforms from around the world and have been keeping in touch with some of them. Unfortunately, many of them don't know Jesus. Some say they rely on people or just themselves. They think being good will get them into heaven. I am going to give two verses of why good deeds cannot get you into heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 reads, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, not of works. Let any man should boast. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 reads, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Here's a picture of a castle surrounded by shark infested waters. Let's say the castle didn't come with the remote control to open the door. How would you get in? If you jump into the water, you'll be eaten by the sharks. This is how some people try to get into heaven. They think they can get in without knowing Jesus. In this example, you need that remote control. Jesus, in this example, is the remote control that you need. If you know Jesus, you will experience his mercy, joy, and love. Without knowing Jesus, you will experience God's wrath. Hell is the wrath of God. When we accept Jesus into our lives, then the good things we do for others, Jesus will reward us for. When we don't accept Jesus, every good deed will be for nothing and not acknowledged by God. 
Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 and 24 reads, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Here is another example. Let's say a friend tells you he or she is going to a certain store. You tell this person that you just heard the store is being held up by a gunman. It would be too dangerous to go to that store for fear of getting shot. Your friend doesn't take you seriously and decides to go anyway. Now you fear for your friend's life. This is how I feel when I see people not wanting to accept Jesus. I fear for their souls. Would you let a total stranger into your home? If you don't get to know Jesus, he will not accept you into his kingdom. Make sense? Hmm. Some people may argue with God saying they deserve heaven because they did good things. You cannot persuade God that your good deeds replaces accepting Jesus. We have human brains, whereas God is holy and without sin. He doesn't think the way we do. If you argue with God, you will not win. If you reject Jesus, he will reject you and you will be separated from God forever. Some of you may be saying to yourselves, my life is good. I don't need Jesus. Everything that is good in my life is because of my own doing. That is absolutely not true. John chapter 15 verse 5 reads, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Someone asked me about the Holy Spirit and sounded nervous about having someone living inside one's body. The Holy Spirit is our connection to God. It is sort of like our conscience, letting us know when we've done wrong and guides us in life. When one receives the Holy Spirit, sometimes he or she cries after accepting Jesus. Those are happy tears, like when something wonderful happens. This is like a feeling of relief, a cleansing, as then all sin is forgiven by God. Sometimes people fall down like a weight has been lifted off their shoulders, and some people show no emotion or reaction at all. Everybody's different. There are many so-called gods that people worship. The only God I worship is the one who sent his only son, Jesus, to die to save us from our sins. And that is the only reason for the Christmas season. My next song will include some questions. If at any point you want to say the words, I do, during the song, then you may want to refer to my video entitled, I saw the light where I explain how to accept Jesus into your life. Some of you may have been exposed to religion early on in your life and found it to be a burden instead of a blessing. There are many religions that have man-made laws. Your walk with the Lord is supposed to fill you with joy, not sadness. You are just one short prayer away. I've included the link in the description below. If you had just five minutes left to live, would you know for sure where you will spend eternity? And now for my next song entitled, Say I Do. Revelation Faithbook fans, you know the drill. Say it with me. Roll em.
wish you all a very Merry Christmas. May God bless you always. Bye for now, and thanks for watching Studio 7. See you next time.